Questions are out. The Honorable, Leader, the Honorable Opposition House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we've just learned that China will stop purchasing Canadian canola, wheat, peas, linseed, and canola meal. This is wow. devastating yeah. news for our farmers. More than 40% of Canadian canola alone is currently sold to China. The loss of this market is catastrophic, and it will cost billions of dollars to our economy. Meanwhile, this Prime Minister is so consumed with scandal and cover-up that he is completely incapable of managing these critical economic issues. So what is the government going to do for our farmers who are caught in the crossfire between our Prime Minister and because of his incompetence and his cover-up. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Speaker, we know that access to new markets means more money for our, uh, for our farmers, means support for the middle class. Representatives of both countries are continuing talks to come up with a solution to this issue, and this as quickly as possible. We're working closely with representatives of the industry on this issue, and we shall continue to keep people informed as we are informed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, farmers don't need handouts from the government. They need their trading partners in China, and they need their Mr. Speaker, the House just finished over 30 hours of voting where Liberal members continued the cover-up. Right. Over 30 hours of protecting the Prime Minister and his corruption. Over 30 hours of refusing to let the former Attorney General speak. If these are the lengths that the Prime Minister is willing to go to stop the truth from being told, then what, is he, what he is hiding must be absolutely terrible. Yeah, yeah. And if he has nothing to hide, then why doesn't the Prime Minister come clean with Canadians and stop the cover-up? Mr. Speaker, we, our thoughts, are with this... Order. 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 We have, we have limited time for a question period, as members know, and, and these extra interventions uh, delay and possibly remove uh, questions from what might be intended otherwise. I'd ask honourable members to keep uh, quiet while other members are answering questions that have been posed. We're going to go back to the honourable government house leader to finish up her response, and then we'll continue. Okay. The Mr. Speaker, I'd like to start that our thoughts are with the Father Paul Grove and about everything that happened at the Saint Joseph Oratory. Police are investigating and we are following developments with closely. Let's not let Canadians be mistaken. That was 31 hours of Conservatives denying funding to services that Canadians benefit from. Mr. Speaker, I have no problem being up all night to fight for Canadians. That's what we'll do. House Leader. Well, Mr. Speaker, Canadians were watching last night and throughout the 31 hours, and they saw exactly what this Liberal government, what these Liberal caucus members were doing, and the cover-up that the Prime Minister continues. In an explosive interview, interview with McLean's, the former President of the Treasury Board said that there's much more of this story that needs to be heard. Canadians do deserve to, need, to know the truth. So even after the former President of the Treasury Board said more needs to be heard, the Prime Minister continues to cover up. Will when will he stop the cover-up, allow these former members to speak with, and waive the, the client privilege that he has put on them? Stop the gag order. Let them speak. government house leader. Mr. Speaker, Canadians should get to hear, and that's exactly why the Prime Minister waives solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. Mr. Speaker, Canadians should get to hear, and that's why the Justice Committee actually brought witnesses. They will continue to chirp. They will not let me speak because they know, Mr. Speaker, that the institutions are intact in Canada, that they know that the Justice Committee is doing their work. Mr. Speaker, Conservatives should stop playing politics and get to work. It's really unfortunate because when they were in government, they made these same comments to the NDP talking about the cost of having the House run all night long. Mr. Speaker, we know that we will fight for Canadians. Thank you.
The Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker. The Business News Network asked the CEO of SNC Lavalin if jobs had been at risk. And he said, I never said that. I never spoke about it to the Prime Minister. I don't know what people make up or what they have in their minds. And quote, when the, will the Prime Minister put an end to this cover up? The Honourable House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the member across the way is saying these things, but we respect our institutions and we know that the commissioner, the ethics commissioner will investigate, that the ethics committee will do its work. And I think I would ask them to have a little respect, but we on this side, we do respect these institutions and their work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the honorable member. Well, with respect, Mr. Speaker, we do respect the intelligence of Canadians, which the present government does not. The boss of SNC Lavalin never said jobs were at risk, but the Prime Minister, Gerald Butts, the clerk of the Privy Council, who uh, resigned Monday, they said several times that this was the case. We know that this was a made up story to justify their abuse of power vis a vis the former Attorney General. When will the Prime Minister put an end to this cover-up? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, if one respects Canadians, one should know that the Prime Minister did waive solicitor-client privilege so that the former Attorney General could say what she had to say. And this is why the committee, the Justice Committee, sat in public so that Canadians could hear this. But Conservatives are mixing things up, and their actions do not match up with their words. Thank you. The Honourable Member for berthier masquinonge Mr. Mr. Speaker, our thoughts and prayers are with the priest at the Saint-Joseph Oratory. The Prime Minister promised that this interference scandal would be dealt with at the Justice Committee, but then they put an end to this study. Now they're saying that the, the Ethics Commissioner is investigating, but they know that this is not within his mandate. We know that the former Attorney General and the former President of Treasury Board have more to say to Canadians, and they should follow up on the requests of the NDP and have a public inquiry. The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, we know that the committee did their work and that the former Attorney General was able to share uh, information with them. And the Prime Minister uh, waived solicitor-client privilege and cabinet confidentiality. But we, on this side of the House, we have various responsibilities. And if there are changes or losses of job, the Conservatives will be the first ones to say we didn't do what we should have done. We take our responsibilities very seriously and will continue to do so. The Honourable Member for berthier masquinonge Mr. Speaker, the Liberals must understand that no matter how they try to change the channel, they just can't do it. People have lost confidence and know the Prime Minister did something inappropriate. The two former ministers say that they haven't said everything they have to say to Canadians, but the Prime Minister doesn't want to have them heard. People need the truth. Canadians deserve the respect of the Liberal government, and the Liberals must launch a public inquiry. Will they do so, yes or no? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, the members who sit on the Justice Committee have done their work. The Ethics Committee will do its work. It was the Conservatives who sit on the Justice Committee they thought that they wouldn't have meetings with the former uh, minister, but they did. And several uh, 
important witnesses testified. We have trust in our system and we know it works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister and his office have been accused of interfering in the most important and serious prosecution of corporate corruption in modern Canadian history. They've had a slew of high-profile resignations over the issue. And yesterday, the former Treasury Board President clearly stated, and I quote, there's much more to the, to the story that should be told. She went on to say, there's been an attempt to shut down the story. So with allegations this serious, the country can't move on until Canadians know the whole story. So will the Prime Minister do the right thing and clear the way for the truth to come out, call a public inquiry for a fair, nonpartisan assessment of the facts? Here. Yes or no? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, what's clear is that the NDP said that the Justice Committee would not meet. It met. The NDP said the witnesses would not be able to appear. They appeared. The NDP said that the former Attorney General would not be able to speak. The Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence, something that has not happened in the history of our country, to ensure that she could speak. The NDP will continue to say no, but we will say yes Canadian, to Canadians. We will say yes, Canadians. We will fight for you while they choose to play their politics just like the Conservatives are. There was a time that the NDP would at least talk about the issues of the day, but today they are talking about politics as well. That's new the Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, but you don't get to uh, move on to talk about other issues when you have a serious cloud of corruption hanging over you. Public service isn't transactional. It's not we announce a little program here and we get to help our buddies over here. That's not how it works, Mr. Speaker. And with respect to the Justice Committee, we know full well that a Liberal majority on that committee shut down the study. We know because the former Attorney General wrote the Justice Committee today and said she has more to say and hopes that the committee will accept her comment. She also said that those comments will be, li will, will be limited by the restrictions on the waiver that the Prime Minister issued. So will he lift the waiver and will they create a forum for these former ministers to speak? The Honourable Government House Leader. The Justice Committee members decided on parameters that they would be looking at and that time dealt with the time that the former Attorney General was the Attorney General. When it comes to solicitor a client privilege that is only pertinent to an attorney general mr speaker and now all of a sudden after the justice committee members set parameters the prime minister lifted cabinet confidence and lifted solicitor client privilege for those parameters the member is basically insinuating or implying that they should be working outside of those parameters have some regard and respect for this place mr speaker i would encourage you to remind honorable members thank you Central Okanagan, Similkami Nikola. The former president of the Treasury Board made it clear that the Prime Minister is hiding something from Canadians. Now, she told McLean's magazine that, and I quote, there's much more to the story that needs to be told. The Canadian people deserve to know the truth and to hear that story. The cover-up, Mr. Speaker, must end. Will the Prime Minister allow the Ethics Committee to conduct a public investigation into his corruption scandal? Yes or no? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, when you listen to the opposition, you know that they have different approaches and styles, and that's because when it comes to the way they function with their members on these committees, it's because they've always believed in a centralized system. When it came to the former government, Stephen Harper's government was the most centralized PMO. It was the most controlling Prime Minister's office. And we committed to Canadians that we would do government differently. And that's why they cannot comprehend that members are able to make choices. And they cannot comprehend that members might have differences of opinions. We on this side, we're okay with that. The Honourable Member for Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. Order. The President of the Treasury Board made jaw-dropping statements that confirm the Prime Minister is hiding details on the SNC-Lavalin scandal. She said, and I quote, We actually owe it to Canadians, as politicians, to ensure that they have the truth. The Prime Minister's talking points are misleading. Canadians deserve the truth. The cover-up must end. Will the Prime Minister allow the Ethics Committee to conduct a public investigation into his corruption scandal. Here, here. Honourable Government House Leader. 
Mr. Speaker, Canadians are, are watching and they're noticing that every single day the members of the opposition read their questions that are provided to them by the leader of the official opposition. They talk about talking points, Mr. Speaker. They are spitting out those talking points pretty well that their leader's office is providing them. But on this side, Mr. Speaker, we know that members are having tough conversations and they will always yell over me. They say that people should be able to speak, people should be able to have a respectful workplace, but that is not something they provide. Good. The Honourable Member for the ville Pinière, order please. Mr. Speaker, it seems we haven't seen the end of our troubles with the saga of the Liberal scandal. We've begun a new chapter, in fact, and Canadians have lost all confidence in the Liberal government. It is very troubling that the former President of the Treasury Board said there was a lot that remained to be said in this matter. Mr. Speaker, Will the Prime Minister continue imposing his say-nothing policy, or will he allow the former President of Treasury Board to speak and put an end to this cover-up? The Honourable Government House Leader, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister did waive privilege and cabinet privilege so that the former Attorney General could testify at committee. Canadians are watching our conversations here, they're watching our debates, and they don't want Conservatives to vote against measures that will help them. We trust that the Conservatives would have cut these programs, and Canadians know that their intention is not to see our economy go forward, but to cut programs that would benefit Canadians. The Honourable Member for Lévis Lot Pinière. Mr. Speaker, a, an inquiry by the Ethics Committee is necessary to get to the bottom of this. The former Attorney General and the former President of Treasury Board still have a lot to say to Canadians. Mr. Speaker, our country is losing all credibility internationally through this cover-up. Will the Prime Minister allow the Ethics Committee to conduct a public inquiry into this corruption scandal? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, what a performance. I think uh, it's rather repetitive for the member across the way. Uh, we on this side of the House, we will continue to work for Canadians. We know that the Ethics Commissioner will be investigating. We have confidence in the Commissioner, and we on this side of the House will continue to work for Canadians to make sure they have the programs that they need. We're working for Canadians, but the uh, Conservatives are just uh, doing petty politics. Prime Minister and his team repeatedly and inappropriately pressured the former Attorney General to drop bribery charges against SNC-Lavalin, claiming 9,000 jobs were at risk. However, the CEO of SNC-Lavalin said that about the 9,000 job number, quote, that's incorrect and we've never said that. Wow. Canadians deserve the truth and the Prime Minister must end his cover-up. Will the Prime Minister allow the Ethics Committee to conduct a public investigation into his corruption scandal? Yes or no? Or no? The honourable, the honourable government house leader, uh, Mr. Speaker, it's it's interesting because um, that is one of the very members that believed that the justice committee would never meet, and the justice committee was meeting, and the conservatives and that member, they were saying that witnesses would never get to appear at the justice committee, but Canadians got to see for over five weeks, which is longer than most legislation is even studied in committees that witnesses were appearing. That member. And the Conservatives said that the former Attorney General would not get to speak because they know that when Stephen Harper was in government, he would not have waived solicitor client privilege. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister did waive solicitor client privilege, did waive cabinet confidence because that is what we committed to. Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. And he would have put the corporate. What the last 30 plus hours of voting has shown Canadians is, is that the Liberals will go to any lengths to keep up the Prime Minister's corruption cover up.
They've shut down the Justice Committee, intimidated the former Attorney General, bullied the former President of the Treasury Board, and have members of the Liberal Caucus doing his dirty work. Wow. Will the Prime Minister finally end the cover-up and allow the Ethics Committee to investigate, including from hearing all of those who have been named in his corruption scandal? Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, you know, we know that the Justice Committee studied it. We know that the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is investigating this matter. We know that there's an ongoing court case, Mr. Speaker. I have confidence in the institutions. If there is more that needs to be done, I, I have faith, I have confidence that it will get done. But what I can control is that I was elected by the people of Waterloo. I was elected to be part of a government to ensure that I fought for Canadians. Canadians saw that over 31 hours, the Conservatives cut, and they actually voted against measures that benefit Canadians. And they chose to do that. And yesterday, over 31, 31 hours, Mr. Speaker, Canadians got a clear vision of the programs and services the Conservatives will cut, cut if cut, they ever get cut. the government. The Honourable Member for Vancouver. The former Attorney General just wrote to the Justice Committee and is trying to find a way to tell her whole truth. The Liberals kept changing their story. First, the former Attorney General was difficult to work with. Then, it was simply that she interpreted it differently. Now, the Liberal machine is trying to convince Canadians that both ministers who resigned due to lack of confidence in this Prime Minister can say whatever they want in the House and be protected by parliamentary privilege. We went through 31 hours of votes yesterday and they won't let her speak. Once and for all, will the Prime Minister completely waive privilege and cabinet confidence? Hey, hey, hey. Honourable Government House Leader. Hi, uh, Mr. Speaker, we know that the Attorney General was able to appear at the Justice Committee and that's because the Prime Minister waived uh, solicitor client privilege and that's because the Prime waived cabinet confidence and should there want to be submissions and so forth as we see these conversations take place in public and it's interesting because the opposition seems to be very concerned but we have confidence in the systems and we know that if they want to submit information that they should be able to because Canadians do deserve to get to know and when the Prime Minister said that Canadians should get to know these meetings took place in public so that they would get to know I encourage Canadians Mr. Speaker to look at the records of the members that voted over the last 30 the honorable member for Vancouver East sorry it's because the former AG wants to tell her whole truth what part of that doesn't the government get no one is buying the government's talking points the Liberals shut down the Justice Committee they're moving heaven and earth to prevent Canadians from learning the truth the former AG hired legal counsel to advise her on what she can and cannot say. Unlike the Prime Minister, she is not willing to break the law. The former Treasury Board President made it clear. Liberals assume that the best interests of Canadians are their own political interests is one and the same. Is that the real reason why the Prime Minister won't call a public inquiry? Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. The member need not be sorry that witnesses appeared at the Justice Committee. The member is okay to recognize that the former Attorney General did appear at Justice Committee and the former Attorney General confirmed that the rule of law in Canada is intact and that Canadians can have confidence in it. The member can appreciate the fact that the former Attorney General also stated that the law was followed at all times. But Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister recognizes that we can always improve our institutions. And that's why he took that witness very seriously. And that's why he acknowledged that there was a breakdown of communication and trust in his office. That's why the Prime Minister has put forward measures to ensure that we continue to strengthen our institutions. The NDP is playing politics. The Honourable Member for Durham. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Foreign Minister. The OECD is investigating the SNC lab affair and the foreign minister promised that the government was cooperating with an independent investigation trouble is her own liberal colleagues ended that independent investigation and the prime minister is refusing to allow the key witness to speak when will the foreign minister stop her role in this cover-up and allow the former attorney general to speak at the ethics committee here, here, here. Parliament Secretary of the Minister of Foreign Affairs 
proud of our participation in the OECD. Mr. Speaker, the rules-based international order and the institutions that underpin it are absolutely essential for the defense of the Canadian national interest in the world. We've been clear from the start that we support the work of the OECD Working Group, and we will continue to cooperate with the OECD throughout this issue. Thank you. Well, member for Durham. Mr. Speaker, how can that member be proud when the OECD is investigating Canada for corruption, Mr. Speaker? Now, a few years ago, the Prime Minister said to Canadians he had an admiration for basic dictatorships. Now he's running one, Mr. Speaker. When will the minister live up to her lofty language about the international rules-based order and demand that the Prime Minister pay attention to domestic rules of order. Here, here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I think it's very evident that our government, under the leadership of this Prime Minister, has reinforced Canada's inter interest in the multinational rules-based order. We're proud of our work with the OECD. We're proud of the work we've been doing in Syria, which I just returned from last week. We're proud of the work we've, defend, we've done to defend human rights around the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Oh, well oh. Member for Calgary Nose Hill. This week, the CEO of SNC-Lavalin said that those jobs that the Prime Minister set at risk because he had to engage in a greasy corruption scandal? Nope. Completely debunked that. Meanwhile, today, Canadian farmers are waking up to a complete catastrophe in their market because of his incompetence. Meanwhile, 100,000 people are out of work in the energy sector because of the No More Pipeline job. And meanwhile, we know that the former Attorney General said to her that he was concerned about the SNC-Lavalin scandal because he was a Quebec MP. Why does this Prime Minister only... The uh, time has expired. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, it sounds like um, the articles that people are reading, they will come to their own conclusions. And that member is entitled to read that article and take out what she would like out of it. But what I do know, Mr. Speaker, is that the Justice Committee did look at this matter. The Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is investigating this matter. We know that there is an ongoing court case, and Canadians can rest assured that the rule of law in Canada is intact. We know that we can always improve and strengthen our institutions. We will continue to do that, Mr. Speaker, and Canadians can have confidence that we will ensure it happens. Thank you. For Calgary Nose Hill. Nobody is buying that. Nobody's buying that. There's Farmers waking up that are going, where are we going to market our goods? There are hundreds of thousands of people out of work because of this government's failure and incompetence, because they've been mired in scandal for weeks. That's all that they care about. Why will the Prime Minister only move hell and high water to protect his own job? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, once again, the rule of law in Canada is intact. The Justice Committee has looked into this matter. The Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is investigating this matter. There is an ongoing court case. Mr. Speaker, that member stands and she points her finger and she does whatever. Over 31 hours, Canadians were able to see the voting records of members. They voted against programs and services that benefit Canadians. Programs and gender and women equality programs. Programs for national defense. Programs for indigenous people. Programs to help build the but no, Mr. Speaker, every time the Conservatives voted against it, Canadians see it clearly. The Honourable Member for saint saint bagot Mr. Speaker, the Liberals had an opportunity to act to resolve the issues of seasonal workers, black holes and a labour shortage. But instead, they're just taking money out of the EI fund. Workers have had enough of broken promises, and yet the Liberals had promised to tackle the issue of the black hole that was affecting so many families. Will the Liberals finally admit that they rather give gifts to the wealthiest rather than truly help working men and women? 
The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families. I'm proud of the work we've done on EI reform in this government, which includes addressing the issue of seasonal workers in, in industries that are affected by, by the surges and, and the loss of work due to, due, due, due to, 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 to uh, the seasonal nature of the employment. We have also made it easier to work while in benefit. In this fact, in this year's budget, we also added additional measures to make sure that people that are transitioning between jobs, people that are working on claim, can get the support they need to participate in the economy in the way they want to in the communities where they live. Our government continues to reform EI, continues to be focused on making sure that vulnerable Canadians not only get the support from EI, but EI is there to make sure they get to a better future. That's why we're doing the jobs we're doing. The Honourable Member for Churchill, Kiwatunik Aski. Mr. Speaker, Wednesday's question period involved the Prime Minister touting his own feminist. Now, as all good feminists know, there's nothing more feminist than a man bragging about his feminism. But let's check the facts of Budget, budget 2019. Budget 2019 has nothing for childcare, nothing for pay equity, and it fails Indigenous Shame. women. This budget has nothing specific to address the tragedy of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. In fact, Indigenous women's groups have been clear that they feel ignored and have been left behind. So when will the Prime Minister stop bragging and act on the priorities of Canadian women, the priorities that they deserve action on now. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2019 builds on almost $17 billion of investments in Indigenous priorities with an Indigenous for, with an additional additional $4.5 billion to advance Indigenous self-determination, redress past wrongs and close socio-economic gaps. This right. includes, Mr. Speaker, $1.4 billion to forgive communities' outstanding comprehensive loan claims, $126 million to establish National Council for Reconciliation, and more than $15 million to ensure that federal policies and programs reflect the voices of Indigenous youth. These sustained investments of more than $21 billion affirm and reaffirm our commitment to reconciliation. The Honourable Member for Pontiac. Mr. Speaker, the riding of Pontiac measures over 30,000 square kilometres and all of it lies within traditional unceded Algonquin territory. Wow. So this week I was so honoured to join the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations in celebrating the signing of an MOU and the global settlement of 29 separate claims between Canada and Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabeg First Nation in the north of my riding. Can the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations update this House on what this MOU you and $116 million in compensation means for reconciliation with this Algonquin community. Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the member for Pontiac for his tireless commitment to reconciliation and more specifically his engagement with the people of Kitigan Zibi. I also want to highlight his undertakings in learning the Algonquin langu language. He is an example to us all. With the signing of this MOU and the settlement of these claims, which includes a compensation of over $116 million, we're supporting the acceleration of community-led social and economic initiatives and advancing reconciliation in a way that respects the rights and interests of Kitigan Zibi. By working together, we've not only helped address addressed past wrongs, but taken important steps to renew and strengthen our nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Kitigan Zibi, Anishinaabeg. The Honourable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, the government keeps repeating the refrain that committees are independent of the PMO and masters of their own domain. Here, Wayne, so I my question to the government, right here. has there been any communications from either the Office of the Chief Government Whip or the Office of the Government House Leader and Liberal members of the Ethics Committee about next Tuesday's meeting. The Honourable Government House Leader. Well, just by getting some information from a member of the committee to me herself, she says that there hasn't been. This, this is, I, I, I'll tell you that I have the utmost respect for this place. When I'm asked a question, I always do my best to answer that question. When it comes to my office, I do work with a, a, a solid team of people. I've been in the House for over 31 hours voting. I slept for five hours, not even, Mr. Speaker, and I'm right back in that very safe seat. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Foothills. Mr. Speaker, no one believes the Prime Minister is not manipulating these committees to cover up his scandal. Not the no Prime one. Minister told the Attorney General and all Canadians a complete fairy tale. Fairy tale. We now know no jobs were ever at risk. The CEO of 
of SNC Lavalin said he never cited 9,000 jobs as a reason to end their criminal trial. In fact, when asked about these mythical job losses, the CEO said, I don't know what other people believe. Wow. When will the Prime Minister come clean with Canadians? When will he end this cover up? When? Honorable government house leader. Mr. Speaker, as I've stated, the Justice Committee looked into this matter. The Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is currently investigating this matter. There is currently an ongoing court case in this matter. We have respect for these institutions on this side, Mr. Speaker. The Conservatives never have had respect, definitely not under 10 years of Stephen Harper. And so I would say that Canadians are actually wondering and considering when will the Conservatives start having respect for institutions and when will the Conservatives show up to work and stop voting against measures that benefit Canadians. We on this side will vote for them to ensure that we have a cleaner, greener future for our kids and grandkids and a stronger. The Honourable Member for Beauport, Côte de Beaupré, Ile d'Orléans, Charlevoix. Mayor, thank you, Mr. Speaker. If we voted against it, it was because of the cover-up. Mr. Speaker, the former President of the Treasury Board said that there is much to the story that should be told. The former Attorney General said that she hadn't spoken all of her truth. Now we know that she has sent a written statement and her emails to the Justice Committee. The Prime Minister has been providing false answers in the House when he said that he was working for the 9,000 jobs, but actually the CEO, Neil Bruce, said that those 9,000 jobs were never at stake. So when will the Prime Minister stop? Leader, the government, the Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we can see that the Conservatives are coming up with various reasons for voting against measures that will benefit Canadians, such as the Economic Development Agency that will help businesses in Quebec. The Conservatives voted against that measure. So all these things that help Canadians are not being voted for on the part of Conservatives, even though they say that they stand up for Canadians. Now, the Ethics Commissioner is doing his work, as is the Justice Committee. Mr. Speaker, the former Attorney General told us the Prime Minister insisted jobs would be lost if she didn't end the corruption trial of SNC-Lavalin. The Prime Minister told the media his 9,000 job loss figure came from the company itself. Wow. Now, the CEO of SNC-Lavalin stated he never talked to the Prime Minister about a DPA or about jobs. The Prime Minister must end this cover-up. Will he allow the Ethics Committee to conduct a public investigation into his corruption scandal? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the answer, I'll, I'll remind Canadians once again that the Justice Committee looked into this matter. They looked into this matter for over five weeks, Mr. Speaker. There's a process here, and like, let's say legislation goes through the House, then it goes to committee. Most pieces of legislation are not even studied for five weeks, but there was five weeks devoted to these meetings to ensure that Canadians could hear from witnesses. The Prime Minister actually waived solicitor-client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. The Prime Minister actually ensured that everything was available so that Canadians could be able to hear and come to their own conclusions. But what the Conservatives don't want to talk about is that they voted against programs like Western Diamond. The Honourable Member for Kootenay, Columbia. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal budget acknowledges that lack of affordable childcare is putting education, employment and home ownership out of the reach of parents, particularly mothers. Despite this, there is no new funding for childcare and the crisis persists across the country outside of Quebec. The Royal Commission on the Status of Women said almost 50 years ago, <laughs> universal child care is critical to women achieving true equality. Mm -hmm. Yet the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development is still calling this, and I quote, a long-term vision. <laughs> Will the government stop making promises and show leadership on the child care crisis? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. You know, the funniest thing about the NDP is that when you put something in the budget, they complain it's long-term. 
And when you don't put something in the budget because you did it last year, they ignore that you did it last year. The reality is this, $7.5 billion has been invested in childcare agreements. These agreements are with provinces right. and territories, but they also have specific agreements with Indigenous-led organizations uh, through the NIOs. So our $7.5 billion over the next 10 years is now in the system, delivering childcare spaces in BC and Ontario, right across the country from coast to coast to coast. We're proud of our investments. We realize more is needed to be done, and that's why we're also focused on lifting women out of poverty. The numbers on those figures are even better. They wanted to ask me a question about that. Happy to answer. Honourable Member for Hamilton Mountain. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals have failed on their promise to protect pensions and benefits in case of corporate bankruptcy. The Prime Minister had one last chance to deliver on his promise in Budget 2019, but he chose to leave Canadian workers and retirees without protection. Despite having seen the damage Sears has caused to Canadian workers and retirees, the Liberals want us to rely on the good faith of rich corporations to protect pensions. Shame. What? Are they serious? No Canadians kidding. aren't buying that. Why are the Liberals more committed to protecting shareholders and rich banks over Canadian workers and retirees? Here, here. Here, here. People, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Seniors. Speaker, our government has had extensive and thorough consultations with industry and Canadians about workplace pensions. We have taken immediate action. Mr. Speaker, through Budget 2019, our government will strengthen the court's power to review executive bonuses, root out attempts to asset strip companies, compel stakeholders and insolvencies to be honest about their interests, invest $150,000 to the National Pension Hub to continue to support pension research, and invest $12.5 million to the Global Risk Institute so they can continue their important work in developing new approaches to financial risk management. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to seniors, we will continue to deliver for seniors. Bravo. Yes, sir. The Honourable Member for Carleton. The Prime Minister told the Attorney General twice on September 17th that the company was, that SNC Lavalin was threatening to move its headquarters unless she shelved the charges in, uh, on fraud and corruption. See, BNN asked the SNC CEO this week, did you threaten to move your headquarters from Montreal? Answer, no. Never? No. So where did the Prime Minister get this falsehood? And why would he say something he knew was untrue to a top law officer in order to shelve charges? Wow. The Honourable Parliament Secretary, the, pardon me, the Honourable Government House Leader. Let's see how long we go before the Conservatives start speaking over me so that I cannot be able to answer. But let's just make sure Canadians understand that when it comes to the way governments work, they all work differently. That member was once a cabinet minister. Different cabinet positions will have different responsibilities, and that's where we have confidence that the Attorney General, Minister of Justice, would fulfill their duties fulfilling, and I'd say they have done a pretty impressive job. But when it comes to the Prime Minister, when it comes to the Minister of Innovation, when it comes to the Minister of Seniors, they all also have different responsibilities. When it comes to a government, we will always fight for the national interest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Carleton. So the Prime Minister claimed that either the, the AG shelved the charges against SNC-Lavalin or the headquarters would leave. Question from BNN to the CEO. Did you ever threaten to move your headquarters from Montreal? No. Where did this issue come up? It was a possibility for SNC, if it was never a possibility for SNC-Lavalin. Answer. I don't know what people make up or what they have in their minds. The Prime Minister is the one who spread this falsehood. Exactly. What exactly did he have in his mind? Honourable oh. Government House Leader. Mr. Oh. Speaker, I would hope that the Prime Minister, any Prime Minister, in their mind will always have the best interest of Stand Canadians here. and the country that they fight for. That's exactly what we've been doing since we were elected, Mr. Speaker. And why the Conservatives are sitting in those benches is because they forgot that their priorities are Canadians, not That's only right. Conservatives. Right. But we on this side, we can fight for the people that we share a political stripe with. But who we fight for first and foremost, Mr. Speaker, is all Canadians. And that's who what we will do. We're going to have tough conversations. And sometimes we will not agree. But it's OK, Mr. Speaker. When Prime Minister says that diversity is our strength, he includes the, the diversity of perspectives, of regions, and the list goes on. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Mr. Speaker, I know that when I asked what the Prime Minister had in his mind, I was being presumptuous. But let me just uh, quote here from BNN yesterday. Because the, the, the inference 
is that if you do not get to go the way of a deferred prosecution agreement, 9,000 jobs would disappear. SNC CEO response, that's incorrect. We have never said that. So now that we know the 9,000 jobs excuse was a lie, and that the Prime Minister was not protecting jobs, exactly who was he protecting? Yeah. Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, to ever imply that the Prime Minister of Canada would not protect jobs is frankly pathetic. not true and frankly pathetic. Right. And that member knows very well that he is going pretty far by making an accusation. Any Prime Ministers, Prime Ministers that I've liked and Prime Ministers that I've not liked have been Prime Ministers of the country I am proud to serve and fight for. Mr. Speaker, there is a spot for partisan politics and that should be in campaigns. When we are set to this place, Mr. Speaker, we should raise the bar on the work that we do. We are all honourable members. Every member of Parliament should be fighting for jobs. The honourable member for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Canada's forests are important to Canadians in a number of ways. Canada's forests and forest products play a major role in meeting climate targets, creating good jobs, stimulating economic growth, and building more resilient communities. Indeed, Canada is home to the third largest forest area in the world and 30%, 36% of the world's certified forests. In light of International Day of Forests, can the Parliamentary Secretary of Natural Resources update this House on how our government is ensuring that Canada's forests are protected and the forest industry remains a source of jobs for communities across the country. The Honourable Parliament Secretary, the Minister of Natural Resources. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the member for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, for the question and his hard work. Yesterday was International Day of Forests. In Northern Ontario, and where I grew up in Capus Casing, the forestry sector has always been an integral part of the community. Canadians are proud that this industry is a recognized world leader in sustainable forest management. To further support the work taking place and the good middle-class jobs it creates, Budget 2019 includes an investment of over $250 million for forest transformation and innovation. Our government will continue to support a competitive and sustainable forestry sector. Merci, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for beauport Limoilou. Mr. Speaker, Liberal members voted for almost 48 hours non-stop for one reason and one reason alone, to protect a Prime Minister who refuses to come clean on the SNC-Lavalin matter. Over the past few weeks, two ministers, the principal advisor to the Prime Minister, as well as the clerk of the Privy Council, resigned. Even a Liberal member left their caucus this week. Clearly something fishy is going on. When will the Prime Minister allow Canadians to learn the whole truth and stop this cover-up? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we know that Canadians have the right to listen to testimony from witnesses at the Justice Committee, and that's exactly why the Prime Minister waived Cabinet confidence and solicitor-client privilege so that the former Attorney General could share everything she wanted to at the Committee. However, we did vote for 31 hours. We were here as a strong government working for Canadians. But we saw yesterday that the Conservatives voted against the Economic Development Agency, including members from Quebec. Where were those members? The Honourable Member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. People in my riding often speak about the importance of access to the Internet. We know that this is an important issue in rural development. We know that it's an important issue for my riding, but also for all rural regions throughout Canada. Can the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Economic Development, Rural Economic Development, update this House on this matter? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for his hard work to help large band infrastructure come to rural communities and help them realize their full potential. I am very proud of our government's commitment. We are making an ambitious new commitment to ensure every single household and business in Canada have access to the high-speed internet by 2030, no matter how rural or remote. 
Where you live in Canada shouldn't limit your ability to participate in the digital economy. Our government has a real plan to get everyone connected. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Perth Wellington. Mr. Speaker, once again, the Prime Minister's stories don't add up. The former Attorney General testified before the Justice Committee that she, that she was pressured by the Prime Minister and his staff to save 9,000 jobs at SNC Lavalin. But the CEO of SNC said he never made any such claims. The Prime Minister must end his cover up. Will the Prime Minister allow the Ethics Committee to take a full investigation into the corruption scandal involving SNC Lavalin, or will he once again make his Liberal MP stand in the way of justice? Oh, government house leader. Speaker, that is the exact same question that the Conservatives have asked at every opportunity that they had a question to ask today. And that's their prerogative. But what we see clearly is that the Conservatives are projecting. This is what they do. They know how their benches operate. They know that they have no room to be able to negotiate or have real conversations. And all they can do is throw mud. We voted for 31 hours because they advertised, they made sure that everyone knew that they were going to ensure that the budget would not be presented in this chamber. Right. Mr. Speaker, when the budget was presented, they were upset. But you know who wasn't upset, Mr. Speaker? Many Canadians from coast to coast to coast because they will benefit from our program. The Honourable Member for Terrebonne. Mr. Speaker, the government's budget announced the construction of three new ferries. A good thing because the Quebec City Davy shipyard had to lay off 1,200 workers because of a lack of federal contracts. 1,200 people on EI, because the Liberals and the Conservatives chose over 10 years to favour shipyards in other provinces. And these shipyards still have not delivered, not a single ship in 10 years. Will the government finally be fair and bring contracts to those shipyards immediately. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And it gives me great pleasure to recall, actually, that over the decade under Harper, Davy Shipyard was excluded. They had 0% of federal contracts under the Harper government. And we've moved to 15% since we've been here, because on this side of the House, contrary to the Conservatives, and to the member for Belchasse HMLV, who was around the table at the time, we recognize the potential and the expertise of that shipyard and will continue to use that potential. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Bon. Honorable member for Terrebonne. Well, I imagine that 15% uh, is because of uh, the legalization of marijuana. Anyway, Mr. Speaker, we know that the Apollo Ferry is just an old dangerous tub that should have been withdrawn a long time ago. But that should have been known beforehand because Transport Canada is responsible for inspecting these ships. We can see that Transport Canada grants certification just like an automatic teller dispenses cash with no inspection and no serious investigation. Will the Minister of Transport take responsibility, tighten up inspection and compensate Quebec, whose only fault in this whole saga was to believe that the minister was doing his work? They believed that he could do that work properly. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Speaker, the safety of uh, passengers is a priority, and in the case of the Apollo, it has never been compromised. Okay. Pursuant to an inspection that lasted multiple days, Transport Canada asked the STQ to make modifications before the ferry was put in service on February 11th. A few minor problems were raised, none of which compromised the vessel's safety. We share the Transportation Safety Board commitment to safety. They have shared some preliminary findings, but it is it's too early to speculate at this time. Sincere thanks to the member from Matin for his hard work on this file. Here, here. La députée de Rivière du Nord. The Honourable Member for Rivière du Nord. Mr. Speaker, the TSP's investigation is not wrapped up, but we already know that Apollo's problems, there were many problems with the Apollo ferry. The integrity of the ducts and hulls, fireproofness, life-saving equipment, main propulsion and auxiliary engines, electronics, instrument control, and the list goes on. We also know that these problems are not no, new, even though Transport Canada said that all was well. Does the minister know that the extreme negligence on the part of Transport Canada, Canada came, on t 
came on the backs of Quebecers and that it's a real threat to the users of these ferries. Uh, uh, Secretary the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Transport. Our office it knows that this uh, particular purchase is a purchase that happened between two provinces. Uh, the Transport Ministry is responsible for looking at the seaworthiness of these vessels. And as I stated, there was a, an, an inspection that lasted multiple days. Uh, there were changes that were asked to be made to, by the, or to the STQ uh, to make these modifications before the ferry was put into service on February 11th. Safety is our absolute top priority, and we will make sure in every case that we take the actions necessary to protect Canadians. Honourable Member for Regina Leuven. Mr. Speaker, until today's breaking news, the only thing growing faster than the number of independent MPs was Canada's canola exports. But now our largest customer, China, has stopped buying Canadian canola. Prairie farmers should not pay the price for an unrelated diplomatic tiff. What actions is the government taking to reopen the Chinese market and to support our canola farmers until this is rectified? Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture. Mr. President, nous savons. Mr. Speaker. We know that access to new markets for high-quality Canadian canola means more money in the pockets of producers and that it also supports good middle-class jobs for producer families. Representatives of both countries will continue to speak and they will find a solution to that issue that is science-based as quickly as possible. We are working closely with industry reps on this issue. And we will continue to keep them informed as new information becomes available. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That will uh, conclude the uh, question period for today.